Would you like to know what goes into securing a generative AI architecture? If so, this video is for you. In this video, we're going to discuss how to secure generative AI. We will get involved in generative AI security architectures, and we will talk about whatever it takes to truly build a full AI security posture or security architecture. Now, we're going to talk about it holistically, everything governance to uh, monitoring detection response. And then what we'll do is we'll dive a little deeper on each one of these elements. But I want you to understand what goes into it first, at least the holistic side of the generative AI architecture. So securing generative AI, like securing any architecture, really takes a holistic manner. Now, in this case, we're going to need some very strong security architecture governance. We're going to need some secure uh, software development life cycles, like we would in any other security architecture. We're going to need to do some threat modeling, but we're going to do it related to things that are related to AI, in addition to what our team normally do for everything else. We will, realistically speaking, need some zero trust framework, and I will talk about what goes into that zero trust architecture and why we need zero trust architecture for these types of environments. We will talk about what it takes to maybe harden your infrastructure. We will talk a little bit about training related to model, model training and the security that's associated with that, along with the inference controls that it's going to take uh, that we need to protect. And we'll even talk about continuous testing and monitoring detection response. So this is the holistic full picture of the security architecture. Now, we'll begin with governance and risk management. Obviously, we're still going to need a real security governance program, but we, there are certain AI governance things we should be thinking about and probably adding to our AI security architecture. I typically love to adopt an AI-specific risk management program to really address the AI-specific risks. Realistically speaking, I typically follow NIST uh, AI RMF 1.0, and they really talk about the functions of governance and mapping and measuring and managing. And this is all to really anchor your security policies and how you manage risks. So I typically follow that. I typically also follow NIST's guidance uh, to profile for generative AI. In this way, we can align our controls to say NIST guidance. And there's a really good document out there called AI Profile. And that is the AI 600-1 document from uh, NIST. And it's from 2024, so it's relatively new. I also like to track the regulatory scope and make sure we're adhering to it with any architecture, especially generative AI. So know and make sure your architecture meets the specifics. What do you need to do for healthcare, for example, versus EU versus something else? So make sure you're adhering to any policies. So we talked about governance. Now let's talk a little bit about the software development lifecycle for AI security. Well, in any architecture, we need to make sure that the security, the software is secured by design. So let's talk about what goes into that. Now, secure software development lifecycle typically means we put security into the entire software development process. So we use secure coding standards, for example, and make sure the team follows secure coding standards. We make sure that we do code testing, static testing, dynamic testing, other users testing, but lots of testing to make sure the code is good. If we've got various training pipelines, we want to isolate those training pipelines to make sure they don't contaminate it in any way, shape, or form. So that's realistically what we're talking about that's going to go into the software development. Now, it's not that much different there than traditional security, but some of these other things will change a little bit. Now, threat modeling changes, typically speaking, for generative AI than traditional threat modeling in that there's new threats. So we now have to model additional AI-specific threats. So typically speaking, we can use MITRE ATLAS for this to kind of uh, model for various AI-specific threats. I also like to really map uh, the key generative AI application risks to the OWASP top 10 security risks for AM LLM applications, where they really talk about the big challenges like prompt injection and sensitive information disclosure and uh, insecure output handling. So really recommend uh, using that to really look at some threats, uh, realistically speaking. And I really want to make sure that we're all speaking a common language. So typically speaking, ground terminology and controls 
into something standard. I typically use NIST AI100-2. It's from 2025. It's got some great taxonomy about adversarial and machine learning to standardize scenarios. So typically recommend going down that path. Now, zero trust. Zero trust is going to be an absolute requirement as we start migrating if we run these applications in the cloud or a software as a service environment or we have them as internet facing or anything where we don't have incredibly strong perimeters. And even if we do, we're in an environment where we need zero trust. So what are we really talking about here with zero trust that we will need for our architecture? Well, it's going to go down the path of a few things. The biggest thing we realistically speaking have to think about is as follows. We need to have a very strong identity and access management environment. And that means that uh, we need to know who the users are, what they're doing, keep track of what they're doing, not giving them more access to what they need to do, and ideally something that's context aware. So very strong identity and access management so that way we can limit what people and devices can do. Now the devices themselves will need to be hardened. That means routers, switches, servers, GPUs, anything, they need to be patched, they need to be up and running, they need to potentially have some endpoint detection on it. So every device we have is going to need to be secured. Now, the networking gear will need to be secured. Whenever possible, we want to do some segmentation and micro-segmentation on their rate limiting, whatever we can do to secure the network to support enhanced security. And there's lots of things we can do, access list, packet filters, uh, IDS, IPS systems, and there are lots of things in networking. Now, obviously, we have to secure our applications and workloads, and lots of that were things we already talked about. But it's also making sure when applications communicate with each other, they do it in a secure way, some form of secure authentication. Now, of course, generative AI uses data. So we are going to have to have a heavy data security posture, everything from a strong data lifecycle management to a, uh, a data, data privacy techniques like data minimization or tokenization or obfuscation along the way. We're going to make sure we have visibility into everything and we're going to automate responses with our SIEM and SORM system. So if we look at zero trust, never trust, always verify, what does that get us before we get into the next section? It means that we encrypt everything to make sure the devices are who they claim to be and the messages haven't been changed along the way. It means we micro segment everything. So one thing gets contaminated, something else doesn't. It means because we're authenticating every request everywhere, every time to make sure that devices can't talk to each other. So that's going to be part of what's going on here as part of our architecture is mapping to those zero trust pillars, securing everything, micro segment everything, limiting where you can move. So now that we've covered zero trust, which needs to be there, uh, I'm going to cover a little bit more about infrastructure hardening and security that you might want to actually use in your security architecture. And we're talking about uh, a lot of hardening of the systems that we're talking about. So if we think about infrastructure hardening, you know, whether we're talking about operating systems in our virtual machines or securing our Kubernetes environment, and think of Kubernetes as open and insecure until you do some work with it, securing our containers, securing our VMs. And when it's possible, if we can use confidential computing where that whatever's being sent to the CPU is still encrypted. And that way it's encrypted in storage by you know storage encryption, it's encrypted in flight, typically with a, some form of a TLS security, and it's even encrypted in DRAM and on the CPU. So that's typically what we're talking about there to truly enhance it. Lock it down in as we go through it. So when we get past that, we actually have to start thinking about the model and th that we're actually training. Because if the model is trained in properly, we're going to have things go wrong, obviously. So we have to think about what goes into our model training. Do we trust the data? We have to make sure that our data is solid. How do we pre-ingest the data? How do we make sure the data doesn't have any malware? What kind of data toxicity screening can we do? So we want to be very careful to make sure that our data coming in and th that is accurate and what it's actually supposed to be. We want to work to use some kind of filtering or sanitation to prevent poisoning of our environments or any kind of evasion mitigation. So filter, sanitize, be careful how you actually train things. 
And uh, we want to do that because if we train something wrong, then our AI systems are going to go wacko, and we definitely don't want that to actually happen. Now, what happens if somebody does something funny? So we have to think about AI, and we have to think about how it's going to make inferences along the way, and we have to make sure that we've got some controls over this as well. So regarding inference controls, what can we do here? Well, we can do some prompt injection defenses. For example, we want to make sure that we've hardened the system so you can't do a prompt injection. And we can look at some kind of untrusted input labeling. We may sandbox various types of content. But that's really what we're trying to do here is prevent against any kind of prompt injection. We also want to do some kind of input and output filtering, uh, whether it's filtering on patterns or making sure that personally identifiable information isn't leaving the system, for example, or secrets aren't leaving the systems, or we're not getting rid of anything that's gonna make us in an environment where we're breaching any regulatory things. So we have to think about it. And realistically speaking, I like the concept of red teaming, uh, continuous testing, uh, and, and what we're actually doing here. So what we're actually doing in this environment is we're making sure we're secure. So we're going to be constantly looking at any kind of red teaming we can do, any kind of adversarial environment and testing, and see if we can break it, see if it's insecure along the way. And that way we've added some safety to our applications. We don't believe they're safe just because we tested them, did things. We're going to test them, we're going to probe them, we're going to try and hack at them and see if we're safe. So we definitely want to do something. And we also want to typically track uh, known failure modes that exist out there. Maybe somebody does a, a jailbreak to the system or any kind of privacy leaks or any kind of mild model disruption of, or denial of service that we need to think of. So we typically want to think about that. And again, OWASP has a really good top 10 scenario of things that uh, hacks that typically occur that I would follow. And uh, probably, you know, the last thing that we'll typically talk about here is uh, monitoring, detection, and response. So we have to basically extend the SOC, the Security Operations Center, into the generative AI applications. So we need telemetry uh, for prompts. We need some kind of context documents you can think of. We need to think about the way the models are actually configured and monitoring them. And we need to start looking for anomalies, so things like that. We probably want to look for rapid spikes in token use or things like that. So we're really going to be monitoring these systems to know what's going on. And of course, if we're going to monitor these systems, what happens if an incident occurs? So we're going to need some incident response playbook. And that's really going to be a key that we've got playbooks. We know what to do if an incident were to occur with AI. So in this video, we really talked about what it takes to secure generative AI. Now, I didn't talk about things that are obvious, like physical security for our buildings. I really went into generative AI. So to go back and look at the security posture or that generative AI architecture again, we discussed uh, governance of your generative AI architectures, secure software development life cycles, threat modeling specific to AI architectures, Zero trust, the pillars of zero trust, the principles and what we're trying to achieve there, uh, what it takes to really harden the infrastructure, what it takes to really protect our mo AI model training and uh, protect uh, inference and put up some inference controls there. We even talked about continuous testing and monitoring detection and response. Now, if you'd like to become a security architect or an AI architect or an enterprise architect or a cloud architect, Join us on a completely free architecture webinar. We run two every single week, and we'll talk about what we do, for example, as a security architect or any other architect that you desire. We'll talk about the skills that go into getting hired as an AI architect or a security architect, depending upon the architecture career of your choice. We'll even teach you how to stand out so you can go get interviews and then get hired. And it's a completely free webinar. These free architecture webinars are live on Zoom. So sign up. It's in the description of this video. We can have a face-to-face -face conversation and I can do what I can on these free webinars to help build your architecture career. Now, if you enjoyed this video, a like on generative AI, if you enjoyed this video on generative AI architectures, if you could give it a like, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off now on I hope to see you real soon.